let us get started. Please open up the class slides if you haven't yet, and go to slide number two. First off, a brief overview of what fleet boosts are. Fleet boosts are modules or skills or effects that affect every fleet member in the current system. You don't need to target them. You don't even need to be on the same grid with them. You just need to be in the same system. They come in two flavors, active, which are modules that you put in your ship, and passive, which simply are granted by having the appropriate skills. So in order for fleet boosts to be passed down, they require an intact command structure. What that is, we'll talk about later. They will, as I just said, work on all pilots in the same solar system, but only in that solar system. They do not require you to be on grid with the person giving the boosts. Also worth noting that they do not directly increase your damage output. They simply can augment your ability to get your damage to the target, but they won't simply make you do more damage. Multiple fleet boosts from different sources will not stack with each other if they affect the same attribute. For example, multiple boosts that increase your shield HP won't stack. Only the strongest effect will be applied. And fleet boosts are stack and penalized with modules that affect the same attribute on the ship that they're affecting. So if you have, for example, an uh, adaptive invulnerability field that increases your shield resistances, and you have a shield harmonizing link that increases your shield resistances as well, then the weaker effect will be stacking penalized. Last basics. Now, for the next few slides, I'm going to go over a quick list of what the different uh, fleet boosts are, or types of fleet boosts are, and what they can do for you. On slide three, we're going to start with a uh, passive fleet boost effect effect that you simply gain by having the appropriate skill, trained to a level, and being assigned as the fleet booster. What that means, we'll talk about later. For the uh, time being, just keep in mind that you need to be assigned as a fleet booster for these effects to work. Uh, now, there is a total of six skills that give passive boosts. The first skill, uh, the most basic one, is called leadership, which simply gives you a 2% bonus to targeting speed and also gives you the ability to command a squad. What that means, we'll also talk about later. And the next four are the warfare skills. The warfare skills are all required to fit the active modules we'll talk about later, but they also give you a simple effect. Uh, armored warfare gives you a 2% bonus to armor capacity. Information warfare, a 2% bonus to targeting range. Siege warfare, a 2% bonus to shield capacity. And skirmish warfare, a 2% bonus to agility. Uh, also, there is an there are mindlink implants. A mindlink implant is a hardwiring that is plugged into slot uh, 10 of your implant sheet. What the each uh, for each type there is a hardwiring or a mindlink rather. That's called appropriately type or for mindlink. So armor for for mindlink, information war for mindlink, siege war for mindlink, and skirmish war for mindlink. Ah, thank you, Paul. Uh, yeah, that's the skills. And uh, there's also faction war, uh, faction variants of these mind links that combine the effects of two separate ones. For example, a, a Minmatar a Republic fleet mind link would give you the bonuses of a siege war for mind link and a skirmish war for mind link at the same time. Uh, yeah, Heronara asks in chat, uh, I have all the warfare skills to level 4 and leadership to level 5, wing commander to level 4. Uh, are these warfare skills stackable with other people? No. Only the highest boost that is appropriate will be applied, meaning if you have a wing booster or a fleet booster that's in a command ship, then your effects will be overridden by theirs, since theirs will be more effective, since they'll have it to fight. However, if you're simply in a small fleet and you're the squad commander, then yes, those effects will work. But if you have a dedicated wing or fleet booster, they will probably be overridden. Exactly. Only the strongest effect will apply. Meaning if you have two boosts that... Uh, Question, are mind links in your head? Yes, they're implants. Hold on, let me link a mind link. Thank you, Paul. Lovely. Uh, yeah, that's mind links. Uh, they're implants that go in slot 10 into the booster's head. And uh, you're the wing commander and there's a squad commander. Do you stack? Does it stack? No. Uh, if they come from, if they affect the same attribute, only a single, like only a single effect can affect the same attribute at the same time, and the strongest, strongest one takes precedence. So if you have two boosts from different sources that both both affect shield capacity, it won't stack. Only the strongest one will work. Does that make it more clear? 
the strongest one will also always apply, no matter where it comes from. If it comes from squad level, wing level, or fleet level. Are there any other booster implants? Uh, booster implants, as in fleet boost implants? No. There's just the mind link implants, and well, the faction variants. Uh, Paul, could you please? The faction mind links? Thank you. Yeah, for example, that one is the Kaldari Navy Warfare Mind Link, which gives you the bonuses of the Siege Warfare Mind Link and the Info Warfare Mind Link at the same time. Since you can't have two regular implants in at the same time, since they both occupy slot 10. Uh, the Pashans ones aren't actually Mind Links. <laughs> Those are just uh, fancy, fancy turret implants. But the other ones, the Republic Fleet, the Imperial Navy, and the Fed Navy are all Warfare Mind Links, so they all give a combination of two uh, of two different mind link implants. And uh, as I think I didn't mention yet, the mind link also augments the passive boost of uh, the passive boost of the warfare link uh, skill it augments. Meaning, for example, an information warfare mind link will replace your information warfare skill bonus, which is 10% at level 5, with a 15% bonus. So if you have an information worth for mind link plugin, you will be giving a 15% targeting range bonus as opposed to 10% just from the skill alone. Is it 13 at level 4? No, it's 2% per level. So it would be 10 at level 4. Oh, you, you can't have, you can't have the mind link in plugged in without having the skill to 5. It's a requirement. The mind links all require a special, uh, the warfare specialization skill to 5, which itself requires the warfare skill to 5. We'll talk about that later when we get to active boosts. Well, and uh, just to briefly mention it, the sixth skill is Mining 4-Man, which is similar to, to the Warfare skills, except it isn't really Warfare, because it's Mining. It gives you a 2% bonus to Mining Yield. And there's also a Mine Link implant, which I think was linked previously. I can't seem to find it. I think it was, oh, there it is, Mining Former Mind Link, there it is. Uh, that's the Mind Link that's associated with it. There isn't any faction variant, variants that give mining bonuses, uh, which gives you, well, effectively parallel to the others, it gives you a 15% mining yield bonus as opposed to the 10% from the skill. All the Mind Links also augment the effects of active boosting modules, but we'll get to that later. So all of these boosts are passive, meaning they get applied as soon as you have the skill, as I mentioned earlier. And you can contrast that to, uh, if you go to slide 4, we've got active fleet boosts. Active fleet boosts are uh, are high slot modules uh, that you fit to your ship. However, only certain classes of ships can fit them. The certain classes are uh, T1 combat battle cruisers, for example, uh, a Drake. A harbinger, those. Not the attack battle cruisers, those are not the Oracle, Tornado, Talos, and Naga, but the other battle cruisers. A Tech 3 strategic cruiser with the appropriate defensive subsystem, which is called Warfare Processor. A T2 command ship, which is a Tech 2 battle cruiser hull. Orcas, which are essentially the high sec mining boost ship. And all, all capitalists and super capitalists that are not a dreadnought. So dreadnoughts can fit them. Carriers can, Rokos can, uh, Titans can, Supercarriers can. Did I forget anything? I have no idea. All Supers and regular caps that aren't Dreads can fit them. They're not bonus to them, though, so they're not optimal, but they can fit them, technically. They never do. All uh, active fleet boosts have a 10 second cycle time, meaning if you're capped out, uh, completely capped dry, they will turn off after these 10 seconds. They do consume cap, small amounts, but still. So you can get nuded out hard enough to not be able to run your uh, active fleet boost modules. They also cannot be activated in warp, so you actually need to be sitting in space to boost. They cannot be activated inside a pause force field, so you can't just sit in a star base and boost from safety. The exception being mining foreman links, so the mining modules can mining boost modules can still be run inside a force field. So miners get to run and hide. Uh, regularly, there is an activation limit, meaning you can only have a single active boosting module on at the same time. 
Uh, however, there is a mid slot module that's passive that's called a command processor one. For each of those modules that you have fitted to your ship, your activation limit goes up by one. Yep, thank you, Kato. That's the module. Uh, there is also a role bonus on command ships or cousin workloads that allow them to uh, activate one extra link, uh, two extra links. So a command ship, orcas, and workloads can activate three links baseline, plus one per command processor. And uh, super capital ships, so super carriers and titans, get a level uh, plus one activation limit per level of the ship skill. So super carriers get plus one per racial carrier, and titans get plus one per racial titan. So you will hardly ever see uh, fleet boost modules on a super carrier titan, simply because they are not bonus to them. We'll get to that later. Now for the next four slides, uh, or actually before that, for the practical fleet, I want to show something off. Uh, I want to show off actually passive boosts. Now, currently you're not getting any passive boosts since I haven't set uh, a booster. So uh, if you could please open up your fleet window, or your fitting window rather, your fitting window. So Alt F if you're in space, you should be in space. If you're not in space, it doesn't gonna work. So undock if you haven't yet. You can be sitting inside the first world uh, of the Unipass, for example, or just on the station, looks too. Now open up your fitting window and take note of your armor and shield hit points. It should be displayed on the right uh, under defense. You should be seeing your maximum armor and maximum shield. Uh, in my case, that's 330 HP armor uh, shield and 453 armor, but it's going to be different for you. And as soon as I set the booster on my alt, what you'll notice is they'll both of these numbers will be going up by 15%. Or rather, shield will go up by 15 and armor will go up by 10. Since my ult has uh, Armored Warfare to 5, meaning you get that 10% bonus to sh uh, armor hit points, and uh, Republic Fleet Warfare Mind Lick plugged in, meaning you get 15% to shields. So I'm going to set my ult as Wing Booster, and your hit points should have just spiked by those 15 to 10%. At least mine did, so I'm hoping everybody else's did. You never know. Okay, no, but nobody complains, so I'm hoping it worked. <laughs> you never know with boosts, they are a bit fickle sometimes. So, moving on. Uh, is this the only way to check if you're getting passive boosts? Yes. Your should be an old grad. Uh, if you want the passive boosts from the practical, or the practical in general, you need to be an old grad, since boosts only work in a single soul system. Uh, Camilla asks, is this the only way to check if you're getting boosts? For passive boosts, um, technically, yes. Uh, well, practically, yes. Technically, no. There's a, in the fleet window, if you open your fleet window and go to my fleet, there will be a check mark in the top left corner that says, uh, that tells you which roles apply boosts to you currently. So, for example, for me, it says bonuses are applied in this system from squad booster and wing booster. Is what it says for me. It should be saying the same for you. I'd hope so, at least. So, yeah. Uh, well, the practical fleet will only see the effects in Algrad, obviously. I can't help with that, sadly. Yeah. Either way... Uh, that's the passive, the effect of passive boost that you're seeing, if you're seeing it. Moving on. Uh, I'm going to talk about one slide each, about the four types of active boosts, which correspond to the four warfare uh, skills that we talked about earlier. Armored, skirmish, siege, and information. Uh, on slide, which slide is this actually? Slide five. Slide five. Uh, on slide five, we're going to start with Armored Warfare Boosts, or Armor Warfare Boosts. CCP never quite knows how to name the things. In this case, they're called Armored Warfare. Armored Warfare affects your armor, if the name didn't give it away. Uh, there's three different modules. There's three, three for each type. Uh, 
to different high slot modules. Ah, there's the links. Thank you. Uh, there's Armored Warfare Link uh, Passive Defense, which increases your armor resistances. There's uh, Armored Warfare Link Damage Control, which uh, decreases the capacity usage of armor repairs. And there's Armored uh, Warfare Link Rapid Repair, which decreases the cycle time of armor repairs. Armor repairs, in this case, meaning both local and remote armor repairs. So this will both, both affect your local tank and boost your logistics ability to rep you. Also, the cap usage bonus and the cycle time bonus are exactly the same in amount, meaning that if you have both of them active, then the capacitor per second is the same. Uh, no, uh, cycle time reduction is a good thing. Cycle time reduction meaning means the modules will cycle more quickly. So if you usually repair once every five seconds, you now repair once every four point whatever seconds. And you'd use your more cap, of course, since you activate the module more often, which is what the damage control link is for, since the damage control link reduces your cap usage by the same amount that the rapid repair link decreases your cycle time, meaning you use the same amount of cap uh, per second to keep your repairs running, just rep more. For armor repairs, that's a double bonus, since you both rep more and you rep faster, since armor boosts land at the end of the cycle, yes. So it also means the reps will land faster. Okay, as with each type for active boosts, there is three things that can increase, well, four things technically, but three things that always work, that can increase the effectiveness of these links. All of these stack multiplicatively, meaning if you get a 50% bonus from one and a 100% bonus from the other, in practice you're getting a, a four times the effectiveness if my math isn't, isn't completely off, but my math could be completely off. Is it four times? No, it's three times. Three times the effectiveness. Uh, either way, there's three things, two skills and the implant. The warfare link specialist skill is a general skill that affects all warfare links. Uh, it's uh, it gives you a 10% effectiveness bonus per level. Hold on. Let me link the... Could somebody link the skill? Uh, the Warfare Link Specialist uh, skill simply gives you a 10% effectiveness bonus per level. Then there is the special uh, Specialist skill in that type of warfare. In this case, Armored Warfare Specialist, which gives you a 20% 20, 20 bonus to effectiveness per level. Having this skill at level 5 also allows you to, to use uh, Tech 2 links, meaning another bonus. Uh, in, in the table at the bottom, you'll see the base amounts for T1 and T2. And you'll see that while T1 only gives you a 4.8% 4, 4, 4 uh, base amount, Tech 2 increases that to 6%, and then you have the increases from specialist skills on top of that. And also, as an addition, the Armored Warfare Mind Link implant and the faction implants that include it, of course, uh, give a, gives a flat out 25% effectiveness bonus on top of that. Uh, also in the, listed in the table is a max amount. That is the amount you get with all skills at level 5, a bind link in and in a command ship that's bonused for the type of link. The command ship bonus we'll talk about later, but command ships are also bonus to the effect of these. So that's armor. Uh, next up, we're going to talk about siege, because CCP calls them siege for some reason. Uh, so then it's by attribute, not by class of warfare link. Uh, could you specify, please? Uh, could, could you, could you, uh, not by attribute, do you mean the stacking uh, of, of links? No, so links, link, different links stack with each other. Different kinds of links. So, uh, shield passive defense will stack with shield damage control, or armor, armor damage control, and armor passive defense, rather. They will stack with each other, they're just fine. But two different boosters, both running armor passive defense, won't stack. So if you have a fleet booster running armor passive defense and a wing booster running armor passive defense, you still only get the stronger of the two. You, you don't get both. No, you, you only get one of the two. The other one isn't applied at all. And then you get multiplicative diminishing returns with, uh, for example, energized adaptive nanomembranes. Since those also affect, those also affect um, armor resistances. 
So first, it is decided which effect you get, which is the strongest passive defense link that anybody runs in the fleet, or a booster runs in the fleet. And then that effect is penalized against energized adaptives, or active hardeners, or adaptive nano platings, or whatever armor resist module you have that isn't the damage control or a reactive. Two different boosters running the same link module won't give you double the boost, won't give you a second boost at all. We'll have exactly the same effect as a single person running. So in a fleet, typically you want one person running each link and not multiple, since that's technically wasted. Okay? Good. Uh, there is no benefit to running multiple of the same link. So there's no benefit to running multiple armored or for passive defense modules. There's a benefit to running multiple Armored Warfare modules of different kinds, but there's no benefit to running two of the same. What about in the case of a fleet booster dying, you want to back up with the same links to move up, essentially. Or some sort of backup that can take over as soon as the fleet booster dies in a large enough fleet. Command ships, however, have a very sturdy tank, so if the command ship... If, if reps break on the command ship, then things might be going slightly downhill. Command ships have very sturdy tanks. But yes, in the case of a fleet booster dying, you probably want to back up with the same links if you can, if you have the number of boosters to do that. If you don't, then well, tough luck. Either way, uh, moving on. Uh, Active Boost Siege, since CCP is never quite sure how to name these things, and simply call them an Active Boost Shield would be way too obvious. So, Siege Links affects your shields, pretty much in the same way that Armored Warfare affects your armor. Uh, once again, we have Warfare Link Specialist, which gives you 10% per level. You're going to see this line on every single slide. Then there is Siege Warfare Specialist, which gives you 10% bonus. And the Siege Warfare Mind Link, which gives you 25% bonus. And the links are pretty much exactly the same as the armor links. They just call differently, but they do the same thing. So shield harmonizing is the same as passive defense, and increases your shield resists. Then shield efficiency is the same as damage control, and reduces the cap usage of shield repairs, both local and remote. And uh, active shielding is the same as rapid repair, and it decreases the cycle time. Once again, we have both the cycle time and the cap decrease, meaning that... Uh, they cancel each other out in terms of capacitor usage. When you use the same amount of capacitor, you just rip if you're running both of them. These are pretty much the same as the armor links, but just called siege instead of shield because I don't know why. CCP is weird. Now, on the next slide, we'll have slightly more interesting links. Uh, skirmish links. Uh, skirmish links... Uh, once again, they have Warful Link Specialist, which gives you 10% effectiveness. Yes, you'll have this for every one of these. Skirmish Warfare Specialist is a specialization skill and gives you 20% per level, and the Mind Link gives you 25%. This is the same for all of these. Now, however, the three links are slightly different. You'll get Evasive Maneuvers, which will decrease the signature radius of all ships, in your sh uh, all, of all ships affected meaning they'll take longer to lock, meaning they'll take less damage from larger weapons, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. They also take less damage from missiles, I suppose. Uh, then there's interdiction maneuvers, which boosts the range of all your propulsion jamming modules, meaning warp disruptors, warp scramblers, and stasis webifiers. By quite a noticeable amount, at full bonuses, they gain 34.5% uh, to the range of uh, stasis web fires and the like. Meaning that a regular web goes out to, uh, instead, of go instead of going to 10 kilometers, su suddenly goes out to 13.4 kilometers. That's a very big increase. So if you run into these strange ships in low sec that can point you out to however long and kill you from that range, and with you having no way of fighting back, they're probably running this link, or getting this link from somebody else. And then there is rapid deployment, which is the third in the skirmish triangle, and it gives you a boost to the 
uh, acceleration of afterburners and microwave drives, meaning afterburners and microwave drives give you more speed than they did before. Meaning you can speed tank better, your tackles are better at catching stuff, et cetera, et cetera. And then we have the fourth type of active boosts, which is information warfare. Uh, information warfare links are electronic warfare links. Uh, once again, we have the specialist skill, which is information warfare specialist in this case, which gives you 20% per level. We have the mind link, which gives you 25%. And then we have three links, even though the table has four rows. The reason being that there's two different types. Uh, question, does web and scram range increase stack with ship bonus from recon ships? Yes. And they're not penalized either. Meaning yes, and a Razor and a Rapier with links get ridiculous point ranges. They're additive, no, they're multiplicative. Which is better in this case. Multiplicative means, means, always means more if you have an increase. Multiplicative means more in general. But yeah, uh, yes, you can point out to like 80k or something like that. Silliness of Recon 5. More if you overheat, even more if you have a faction point. So yes, these are awesome. Uh, anyway, back to info links. Uh, there's three of these. The first one is electronic superiority, which is simply strength of electronic warfare modules, meaning your, electro your, your electronic countermeasures get stronger, your target uh, tracking disruptors get stronger, your sensor dampeners get stronger, and your target painters get stronger, because target painters are evil for some reason. Either way, these all get stronger. Uh, then there is recon operation, which gives you EVOR range, simply bonus to the optimal range of your EVOR modules. This is a good thing, since you can stay far further away and have longer time to run away if somebody tries to shoot you, which you should be doing, since you're EVOR. Unless you're like an ECM tango or something like that. But apart from that, you should be probably running away if they target you. Being further away is a good thing. And the third one is the one that's actually useful to stuff that isn't an ECM ship, because the third one is sensor integrity, which uh, increases your sensor strength, meaning you're harder to jam out, and harder to scan down to, for this as you're concerned with that, and it increases your maximum lock range, meaning you can target further and thus shoot further, assuming your guns have enough range. So that's the three info links. Yes, even more range than Blackbird. Once again, these stack with ship hull bonuses. So uh, if you have a hull bonus that increases your optimal range, and then you have an hull uh, a link that gives you optimal range, you get ridiculous ranges. Fleet boosts are a good thing. And, well, there's one more kind of active boost that I forgot to mention. Uh, mining links. Yes, miners get links. Uh, these also are affected by warfare link specialists, even though they're technically not warfare links. Uh, they're also affected by a different specialization skill, which in this case is called Mining Director. It is simply a specialist skill with a different name, in that it also gives you 20% per level. You also have the Mining Foreman Mind Link, which is 25% flat out. And you have three modules. Uh, three, yeah, three modules. Uh, the first one's Harvester Capacitor Efficiency, which reduces the uh, capacitor need of... Mining lasers, strip miners, ice harvesters, and uh, gas thingies. Gas cloud harvesters, that's the name. So essentially any mining module gets a cap need reduction. To go along with, once again, a cycle time reduction uh, in the form of laser optimization skill, or link, rather, uh, which is a equivalent reduction in module cycle time. Uh, if you have an oracle with full skills and a mind link implant, you get a 32% reduction in cycle time, meaning you cycle about about 50% more. So that's a flat-out 50% bonus to your yield, in addition to whatever yield bonus you get from the mind link, which is 15%, so that's a good thing. The third one's uh, mine laser field enhancement, which increases both the harvesting range and the range of your survey scanner, meaning you have a longer range at which you can find out which asteroids have ore, and then a longer range at which to complete the strip of set ore for the more mining-oriented people out there. Those are the mining ore for links. Or mining, what's the name? Mining foreman? No. Mining foreman links. There we go. I knew it. All right, so that's the five kinds of active links. Do we have any questions on those so far? Yeah, it's a bit of an info dump. Sorry about that. But 
you'll have the slides uh, for a quick reference when you need it. Uh, yes, slides. Hold on. I think these are earlier, I think. Let me scroll up. Slides. Yeah, you can reference these later. I'm just It's a bit of an info dump. I'm just trying to give you an overview of what things they can do for you. I'm not expecting anybody to memorize the names of these, just so you have, like, in your head. Well, I, I remember there being this class where they told us there is something that increases your sense of strength. And then you can go look it up. Either way, uh, that's the five kinds of active boosts you can get. And now I'm going to discuss quickly that... Oh, there's a question. Uh, Kill switch asks, boosting range reaches every single fleet member in the solar system. Yes. So yes, you can be sitting at a deep safe spot and activating your modules, and they'll work on everybody. That's typically what happens, for example, in NullSec, where uh, you have like these 200 people fleets fighting each other. And if the other side had a command ship that you know is augmenting every single ship in their fleet, you'd simply prime rate. So they have boosters sitting off grid in safe spots. But yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go into the two holes that are bonus to uh, Warfare Links. The first one, and arguably the better one, is the command ship. The command ship is a Tier 2 battlecruiser. Uh, that has a roll bonus, as I mentioned earlier, that it can run three Warfare Link modules at the same time. That's baseline without any command processors. And in addition, you get for each level of command ship's uh, ship skill, you get a 3% bonus to two types of active modules. For Amar command ships, you get armor info. For Kaldari, you get shield info. For Galente, you get armor skirmish. And for Mimitar, you get shield skirmish. Yeah, for example, as Paul linked the EOS, that's the Galente uh, command ship. That gives you armor and skirmish bonuses. So it's a really good thing to have for armor fleets. The Damnation is the other one. Uh, as a general rule of thumb, the ones that give you info links have ridiculous buffer. The ones that give you skirmish links have ridiculous local tanks and slightly less ridiculous buffer. There's also two kinds of command ships for each race. Uh, there's a fleet command ship, which focuses on as much tank as possible. You get like upwards of 400k pretty easily of these. Uh, for example, the uh, Damnation that Kato linked is a fleet command ship. As you can see, it gets dual tank bonuses. It gets a 10% per level to shield armor hit points, and it gets a 4% per level to armor resistances, so you can like triple plate these and get ridiculous, ridiculous EHP. Kaldari Nighthawk is similar. It doesn't get that silly, uh, silly uh, capacity bonus though. So the, the, the nation is kind of special in that it has these ridiculous hit points. There's also the Galante and Mimitar ones, which get a bonus to local tank. Um, so they're technically intended to be used in smaller engagements with local tank, except nobody does that. Typically, you'll see them just buffer tank. They just get slightly less EHP. And for their skirmish link bonus, which is great for tacklers and great for everything that tries to pin somebody down, essentially. Uh, is that the full link of command ships? Yes, it is. Thank you, Paul. So, yeah, you have the EOS, uh, the Slepner, the Vulture, and the Absolution. That's the on-grid ones. And then you have the, uh, I think, actually, the Astarte and the EOS are wrong way right. So, Slepner, Vulture, Absolution, and... I think Slepner, Vulture, Absolution, and Astarte are the on-grid ones, and EOS, Claymore, Nighthawk, Damnation are the off-grid ones, or the... the buffer tanked ones, or whatever you want to call it, fleet command ships. But yet, yeah, it isn't really relevant. You just go for whichever gets more tank, essentially, uh, when you're just trying to boost a fleet. As I have mentioned a few times, these things get ridiculous tank bonuses. Uh, Amara gets bonus to armor buffer. Kotari gets bonus to shield buffer. Galente gets bonus to armor local tank. And Mimitar gets bonus to shield local tank. With the buffer tank bonus as taking the form of either a resist bonus or a flat out armor HP bonus, in the case of the absolution, and the local tank bonus is taking the form of well, a repair or a main bonus essentially. 
of course, all of these bonuses are on top of already getting tag two resists. So yes, these get ridiculous tank. Now, on the other hand, you have the slightly more subtle and slightly more sneaky approach to boosters, which are tech three strategic cruisers. Now, as you may or may not know, a tech three cruiser consists of both a hull and for fitting to that hull, five subsystems. Offensive, defensive, electronics, engineering, and propulsion, where you have four choices for each subsystem which to fit. The subsystem has bonuses for each type, uh, like each subsystem has a bonus, and then it also affects which fittings, which uh, how much power grid, how much CPU, etc. you get on the ship. Now, for the defensive subsystem on each Tech 3 cruiser, there is a Warfare Processor subsystem, as Paul linked, which allows you to fit Warfare uh, Link modules at all. However, you do not get a bonus to the amount of Warfare Link modules you can run, meaning at baseline you still only get to run a single one. Uh, you also only get a 2% per level of subsystems kill, instead of the 3% that command ships get, so your boost will be slightly weaker. However, your bonus to 3 active types instead of 2. Amar get armor inference skirmish, uh, Kaldari get shield inference skirmish, Galente also get arm- armor inference skirmish, and Mimatara are the only ones that get both armor and shield. And then skirmish on top of that. Uh, Tech 3 strategic cruisers can get very high sensor strengths, since they have an electronic subsystem called the dissolution sequencer that increases their sensor strength. Then you add electronic countermeasures modules to further increase your sensor strength. Uh, the reason being that a higher sense of strength makes you a lot harder to scan down with combat probes. Meaning if you're sitting in a safe spot, you have a very high sense of strength, and then you have the low signature radius of a cruiser, that makes you borderline impossible to find with combat probes without a dedicated scanning character with implants, etc. Uh, you can also fit the covert reconfiguration and interdiction nullifier subsystems in offensive and propulsion respectively, which means you can fit a covert ops cloak on these, so they're super sneaky. And you can fit an interdiction nullifier, which makes you immune to bubbles. Meaning you can just, if you jump into a gate that's bubbled, you just cloak up and warp out and don't care about the bubble. So that makes them very easy to move as well. So these are the, subs- the, the boosters of choice for situations where you can't afford to have them sitting on grid because too much alpha. And you also want them to be very easily movable. However, as I mentioned, they're inferior to command ships and the command ships get stronger bonuses even if they only get them to two. You will also need some command process in the mid slots, assuming you want to run more than one thing, since, as I mentioned, you only get the one baseline. So yeah, uh, moving on. There is one more type of passive boost that I didn't mention earlier, because it's slightly weird. You see, uh, Titan-class vessels, as in these big, huge things that are like 15 kilometers across, actually give a bonus, a fleet boost. Uh, these fleet boosts are based on the level of the racial titan skill and also count as boosts, meaning they don't stack with similar effects. So, uh, for example, we have for the Amar Avatar Titan, you have a 7.5% per level to fleet members' capacity recharge rate. Uh, for the Galente Erebus, we get 7.5% to armor capacity per level. So, as you can see, at level, th- uh, for example, at level, um, at level 5, these would give you a 37.5% bonus to armor capacity. As this is a bonus to armor capacity, of course, it wouldn't be stacking with uh, the Armored Warfare Mind Link or Armored Warfare Skill bonus. So those skills are re- irrelevant if you have an Erebus in your fleet booster position, or a booster position. Uh, the Kaldari Leviathan gets 7.5% to shield capacity, and the Minimatar Ragnarok gets 7.5% to shield signature radius, which doesn't stack with the signature radius link. Of course. So those deserve a mention, even though for uni applications it probably will never be relevant. And even in NullSec, these are really only relevant if you're in a super capital fleet. For example, if you have the like in say BTEC RB with the huge Titan Brawl, you would have had an armor uh armor boosting avatar or just an avatar flat out or no Erebus actually. An Erebus flat out sitting in a fleet booster position providing 37.5% armor capacity to all capitals, which is a ridiculous amount by subcap standards, seeing as these are titans. And similarly, you'd have a Leviathan providing a shield capacity bonus. But for regular fleets, those won't really be up- applicable, since you're not going to risk a titan to boost your fleet. It's not worth it. Either way, that's the all the boosts that exist, really.
Does the Titan also give a boost if he's piled up? That's a good question. Actually, I think technically it would, yes. Since passive boosts do apply for an Astar base. So, yes, it would, actually. So you could technically pass up... Uh, you could pause up your Titan and give boosts that way if you have a friendly passing system. And you don't mind it getting bubble-wrapped immediately and then camp forever because there's a Titan in there. But, yeah, uh, technically you could, you could. Question, did you miss the Battlecruisers? No, since Tech 1 Battlecruisers aren't bonus to anything. Tech 1 Battlecruisers do not get a bonus to the Warfare links in general. They also don't get a roll bonus to the amount of Warfare links they can fit. They can just, they can fit a Warfare link. So you can fit a Warfare link or multiple Warfare links if you have a command processor fit. And then you can use it to give the base amount multiplied by whatever leadership skills you have. Or uh, rather, warfare link specialist skills you have. So that still works. It just doesn't get that 15% of whatever bonus you get from command ships. Yes, orcas and rockwalls are command ship equivalents for those that are shooting rocks instead of people. The orca gets a 3% per level bonus uh, to effectiveness. And the rockwall gets a... 10% bonus per level to effectiveness if you've got the thingy active that looks weird. So uh, the Rogue is technically the strongest booster in existence, simply because of that additional 50% multiplicative bonus. The Orca is a command ship equivalent for the miners up there. Those, those are your options. Well, in high sec, you only have the Orca, since Rogue is a capital. That can't be in high sec. The Orca is your high sec mining boost thing. And also awesome for gank avoiders and all that crap, but that's kind of off topic. Either way, that's all the types of active boosts in existence and passive boosts. So you now know which effects you can give your fleet, and you now know which effects you give your fleet just for being there. The only things that are uh, left over are the questions whose pilots, or which pilots rather, give these effects. Since it's not everybody, that will be interesting, but it's only specific people. Now, uh, for this, we have fleet rules. There's two types of fleet roles that are relevant for this. First off, there's a command structure, which we're going to have on slide. Which number is this actually? 13. Slide 13. Um, the command structure consists of a fleet commander, a wing commander, and a squad commander. If you're in the practical fleet right now, you'll see we have a wing commander, which is Venus Meld, and we have a squad commander, which is myself. If you're not in the practical fleet, well, you've probably seen this before, haven't you? Uh, now... What is relevant for passing boosts? What's relevant is two things. One, uh, the commanders needs to be in the system and in a ship to be a valid commander, essentially. Note, 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 it needs to be a ship. A capsule isn't enough. So if you're in a capsule, you can't bus, bu pass boosts. If you're in a fleet fight and you die and you have a squad command position, drop from squad command so somebody else can fill it. Simply so boosts can go back up as soon as possible. Since if you're in a capsule and you're a squad commander, then no nobody in your squad will get boosts. Now, what you also need is the respective leadership skill. Uh, leadership baseline gives you two squad members per level and is the squad commander skill. So if you have ten people... Yeah, a squad commander cannot also just boost himself. That's correct. You need at least two people in the squad in system for boosts to work. So you can't have just yourself in the fleet and give yourself boosts. That doesn't work. So you need yourself and then one other person. Yourself and the booster will work. So if you're boosting alt, you can just put yourself in squad command, set the booster to squad booster, and that'll work. You have two people. But just boosting yourself doesn't work. Um, so the squad commander leadership skill is just leadership. And you need it to number of members divided by two. So if you have, for example, eight members in your squad and you want to pass boosts, then you need leadership four. You should probably have leadership to five pretty soon. Like, leadership five is an awesome skill to have. Every fleet commander allows you to have it. It's a rank one, so it doesn't take long. So just train it. Leadership five is quick. You should have it. Uh, the other two are wing command and fleet command, which are for wing commander and fleet commander positions, respectively. Uh, the wing commander needs... Wing command trained to the number of squads, essentially. So if you have three squads in your wing, you need wing command three to pass boosts as wing commander. If you're a fleet commander, you need fleet command trained to the number of wings. Same effect. If you have two wings, you need fleet command two. If you have four wings, you need fleet command four. If you have a full fleet, you need five. 
If you don't have the required skill, then you still pass boosts, but only to that number of wings or squads or whatever. So if you have Fleet Command 2 and your fleet has four wings, then you'll only pass boosts to two of these wings. However, which two is kind of weird in that it's not really consistent in the way it selects these wings. So just have the appropriate skill and you won't have to worry. Otherwise, you've got to figure out which wings actually get boosts, and then it's kind of complicated. So don't do that. Just just train it if you're in a boost, uh, commander position. Honestly, wing commanders and fleet commanders, you should always. You don't need as many, so you should probably have them in the fleet just by having the boosting pilots sit there. Squad commanders are always needed since you need, like, 25 for a full fleet. So um, leadership 5 is awesome. Also, yes, leadership 5 can make you money if you're in the unit. There is somebody that actually pays you if you train the Dish 5 now, so you should train the Dish 5 now. And rob the poorest out of all his money. Alright, so that's the command positions. Uh, if you have three command two and you have three wings, you won't pass boosts to any of them. I think you pass boosts to some of them, but I'm admittedly not 100% sure. Don't you actually pass boosts to any of them? I've seen it happen that you pass boosts to some of them. But, okay, apparently you don't. Good. In that case, I retract my statement, just train it anyway. Just train it and you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> is a short version. Really, if you have Fleet Command 2, Fleet Command 4 is like 4 days, something like that. So, nah, just do it. If you already have it at 2, just train it to 4. Uh, yeah, okay. In that case, you don't pass it at all. You still should still be training it. Though. Okay, so uh, that's the commander positions. That's the criteria for a commander to be a valid commander for that fleet. Now, there's booster roles. Uh, now, the squad wing and fleet commanders are easy to see in the fleet view simply because they'll be listed at the top of their fleet wing squad. The fleet booster, wing booster and squad booster, are slightly more harder to see. The, if you're in the practical fleet, for example, uh, take a look at the fleet window and take a look at the wing commander wing one, which is Venus. And at the right, you will see this small gray icon with a plus in it. That is the wing booster icon. If you hover over it, it'll also say that Venus is the wing booster. What that means is that Venus's boost effects are being applied to everybody in the wing, assuming that the commanders are valid. So, uh, every fleet member will be getting three boosts, assuming Conditions are met. Every fleet member in the entire fleet will be getting boosts from the fleet booster if such a booster is set. However, in order for a fleet booster to apply his active and passive boosts to the fleet member, you need to be a valid fleet commander, or there needs to be a fleet commander that is valid. So it ha the fleet commander has appropriate skills. Can you be commander and booster at the same time? Yes. Do you have to be commander and booster at the same time? No. So, for example, if your boosting character doesn't have Fleet Command 5, then you could put somebody else that has Fleet Command 5 in the Fleet Commander position and still pass the booster's boosts. Also relevant, for example, your Fleet Commander, or your actual Fleet Commander, not your role Fleet Commander, but your FC, will probably or might want to have himself as the Fleet Commander of a fleet, so he can do, for example, Fleet Warps. However, he might not be in a command ship, meaning he wouldn't be giving you boosts. So you can have somebody else as the fleet booster and apply their boosts. The FC just needs to have fleet command trained, obviously. Uh, so the fleet booster applies his effects to everybody. Can the wing commander be the fleet booster? Yes, any fleet member can be the fleet booster. Can you be wing booster and squad booster at the same time? No, but that would also be kind of pointless. Since you and the, like the squad members get the wing boost anyway. So yeah, fleet booster applies his active and passive boost to everybody in the fleet. Assuming that you have a valid fleet commander, assuming that the target member has a valid wing commander, and the target squad uh, has a valid squad commander. So, for example, if you're in squad one of wing one, you need a valid wing commander for wing one, you need a valid squad commander for squad one, and you need a valid fleet, fleet commander for fleet boosts to be applied. So, like I said earlier, if you're in a fleet fight and you're in a squad command position and your ship dies, you want to move yourself out of squad command and have somebody else move up. The reason being, at that moment, you're no longer in a ship, meaning you're no longer a valid squad commander, meaning your squad no longer gets any boosts. 
got fleet boost, it's not a wing boost, it's not quad boost, it's quad boost. So that's a bad thing. Now, next up is the wing booster, which obviously only boosts his own wing. So the wing booster's wing members get his active and passive boosts if the wing has a w valid wing commander. Uh, if you are the fleet commander, a question in chat. If you are the fleet commander, are boosts automatically applied, or do you still need to assign yourself as booster? You don't need to assign yourself. If you form a fleet and you move yourself to fleet command, you will automatically be set as the fleet booster. The moment you move yourself to fleet command, you are uh, getting fleet, bo fleet booster role. If you don't want yourself to be the fleet booster, you need to manually change that. Uh, Next question in chat. So forming a fleet with only yourself while soloing to get the boosts makes sense? No. Since, as I said earlier, you need to have two people in the squad to actually get boosts. So you'd need yourself and a second person in the system to actually make boosts work. If you only have yourself in squad command and nobody else in the fleet, then the boosts won't work. So yeah, and the third booster role is obviously squad booster. It's simple. He only applies boosts to his own squad, and in exchange, you only need a valid squad commander. So if you have enough people to fit in a single wing, you won't need a fleet commander, for example. But you can just have a wing commander and then have the wing booster give boosts. Unless you want, like, three different kinds of boosts, then you need, like, a fleet commander anyway, so you can set a fleet booster, etc. But a fleet commander isn't required if you either want a fleet booster or need a fleet booster for some reason. If you just want to use a wing booster, you can just have a wing commander and not bother with a fleet commander. Is that clear so far? A command structure is a bit complicated topic for some people. Uh, essentially, you need a booster. The booster determines which boosts you get. So which passive and active boosts you get is determined by who is the booster. And if or if you get the boosts is determined by whether the command structure is valid. Meaning, if you want fleet boosts, you need a fleet commander, a wing commander, and a squad commander. If you just want wing, com wing boosts, you just need a wing commander and a squad commander. If you want squad boosts, you need a squad commander. The fleet Wing and squad commander's skills itself only matter for the command position. The fleet wing and squad commander's boosting skills don't matter if he's not set as a booster. So you can only ever get three boosts at one time. You can only get boosts from three people. For example, if you have, I'll, I'll show you an example on the next slide, I think. Yeah, it's on the next slide. Actually, let's go there. I'll, I'll show you the example and that should make it a bit more clear. Now, this is an example fleet layout that we had in the Dragon Slayer fleet. Uh, last two weeks ago, right? Two weeks. Um, in this case, we have fleet boosters and wing boosters. We didn't use any squad boosters. Uh, we had a fleet booster, which had increased armor resistances, increased prop mod speed, and reduced signature radius. Now, as a context for those of you that weren't there, this was like an armor brawling fleet, so you have like cruiser hulls that are all armor tank, so you want the armor resistances on everybody. You want prop mod speed on everybody so you can speed tank better, and you want to reduce signature radius on everybody so they don't get hit as hard. That's the three you want. Uh, and then you have three wing boosters set. One is the wing booster on the, logist on the logistics wing. The uh, logistics wing, obviously, is repairing people. So you want rapid repair and damage control. So you repair more and don't use more cap at the same time. However, the uh, logistics wing is also, well, largely, so they're kind of primary targets for opposing champs. So what you have is you have the info war for sensor, sensor integrity link, which also gives you sensor strength and gives you targeting range, meaning you're harder to damp as well. So that's for largely. So all logistics ships would be getting from the fleet booster, armor resistances, prop mod speed, and sync radius. And then from the ring booster, they'd be getting rep rate, rep cap use, and sensor strength. So they'd be getting those six effects. On the other hand, you have the tackle wing, which is, since this is a uni fleet, pretty large, lots of small frigates. Uh, what do these guys want? Uh, they want interdiction maneuvers, which increases the range of their tackle. That's a good thing. You want to web them faster, you want to scram them faster, you want to point them faster. You want higher range of that stuff. What do they also want? Uh, siege warfare shield harmonizing. Shield resistances. Uh, tackle frigates are going to be shield tanked. A bit more tanks, never a bad thing. And then you have sensor integrity for targeting range and sensor strength, so they can't jam out or tackle if they have something valuable tackled. Or rather not jam them as easily. Still frigates, still pretty easy to jam. And then you have an evil ring, uh, 
which are pretty simple. They just want all the info worth links. These guys have Evor, so they actually want Evor strength. These guys have Evor, so they actually want Evor range, since it allows them to run, run away faster, etc. And these guys have, well, Evor, so they kind of don't want to be jammed or damped or whatever. So they want increased sense of strength. So they get all three info links. So that's an example of how a fleet structure would work. As you can see, the entire fleet, including TD, gets three relevant links. Resists, speed, and save radius. Simple simple stuff that increases your tank and makes it more, more mobile. And then the three specialist, specialist wings, if I can get the words out, get the three bonuses that are relevant to their own role. The entire fleet doesn't get those, just the people that need them. So for the specialist wings, you'd be getting six different links in addition to the passive boosts, while for the entire fleet, you'll just be getting three. Does that make it slightly more clear how, uh, how a fleet structure would look in practice? And uh, since the question was asked in chat, does the fleet commander only get boosts from the fleet booster? Yes. The fleet commander isn't a member of any wing or squad, so he couldn't be getting wing or squad boosts. I mean, which squad should be getting? Who should he be getting them from? In the same way, in a wing booster doesn't get squad boosts. He just gets fleet boosts and wing boosts. And this is why it's important to move yourself into the right squads. Correct. Because if you're Logi and you're not the Logi squad, then, well, you're repping less, which is kind of a bad thing. Yeah. This is why moving yourself into the correct squad is really important. Since by being in the correct squad, you ensure you get the correct boost for your role. So you're not a Logi pilot that's getting a bonus to his electronic warfare strength, which is kind of irrelevant. And you're not a tackle thing that repairs faster, which is completely irrelevant since you're not repairing, etc., etc. This is why being in the correct quad is a really important thing, since what squad you're in, well, which wing you're in technically, determines which boots you get. So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the lecture, at least. Uh, I'm not going to open up chat for questions. I mean, it's been open all the time, but I'm going to open it up for questions again and see if we get anything interesting. I'm going to answer those. Uh, I just realized I completely forgot to turn on boosts when I mentioned them, but nah. Yeah, okay, let's do that now while you people think of questions. Uh, if you have a ship in Aldra in space, in the pause, I'm seeing a bunch of you in pauses. Uh, now, I want you to open the fitting window. And I want you to op to look at your shield resistances. That's the four colored bars at the top, next to your shields. And I'm going to turn on uh, on my alt, who's flying a claymore. Hold on, let, let me link this thing. Uh, let me drag this thing into the lecture, see if people can actually see it. There, that thing. That's a claymore command ship, meaning it's a miniature command ship, meaning it's bonus to skirmish and shield links. It has four command processors, meaning it can fit four. Uh, it can activate four additional links in addition to the three you already get from the command chip itself. So I can run all seven links that I have in my high slots. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn on the shield links. This because I'm going to turn on the three shield links, or siege links rather, since CCP. And what you will see if you're an Aldra is your shield resistances will suddenly jump a bit. For example, in my case, I've got a 0% resistance on, e, uh, on, sh on EM for my shield. And as I turn these on, suddenly I've got a 26% resistance to EM. Well, that's a pretty noticeable thing. If you don't have any armor, uh, any shield resistance modules at all, that means the damage you're taking is getting reduced by 25% outright. If you have resistance modules, it's going to be less. But it's still effectively a free, a free adaptive invul that you gain simply by getting fleet boosts. Now, the next thing I'm going to show off is skirmish boosts. Uh, skirmish boosts are, well, in this case, what you're probably going to notice is, well, your speed is going to go up if you have a prop mod, and uh, the range on your webs and scrams is going to go up too. So in my case, uh, with a microwave drive active, I'm currently going 4,000 meters a second. And my target, my stasis value fire goes out to 10 kilometers. Now, once I turn these on, my microwave drive now goes at 5,000 meters a second, and my stasis value fire now webs out to 13 kilometers. So I essentially go 25% faster, and I web 25% further, 
meaning I can tackle stuff a lot quicker. Which is pretty important, I'm being told. Yeah, if you have a long point, it's going to go up to like 40k, something like that. If you overheat, it's going to get further. If you have a faction point, even further. If you're a recon, even further. Recons can comfortably point out to 100k with heat. That's pretty silly. And, well, uh, for those of, you that, those of you that have electronic warfare modules, I don't actually have one of those, but I'm seeing a Mollus in the Pulse Shield, so I might as well turn the 7th link on. Um, the Mollus should now be seeing his sensor dampener as guests go stronger. Uh, not by much, though, since in this case I'm just using a Tech 1 link, as you can see in the fitting. My ult has crop skills. Uh, I'm using a Tech 1 information warfare link. Uh, which isn't going to increase your, your strength thingy, but not that much. Uh, hold on, I can actually check what the command bonus is in this thing. Can I check what the command bonus is in this thing? No, it doesn't tell me. Why does it not tell me? I don't know, CCP. There we go. Uh, so it's, uh, you have damps in that thing probably, since it's a mollus. And your damps just got 10% stronger. And it's a T1, it's not bonus, they don't have the mind link, so it's a lot weaker than the other, other six I activated, but it's there. So you saw how that one works. I don't actually have armor links in systems only. I don't have that many command chips lying around. Well, I'd, I'd have armor links in heck, but I'm not going to move them over now. So yeah, that's... Oh, Kato has armor links. Kato, you're in your command chip. Then I can make you boost it. Hold on. Yes, you're in your command chip. Well, beautiful. Hold on. Let's see. I'm going to... If you're watching the fleet window right now, what you'll notice is that the a wing booster icon just disappeared from Venus. Meaning she's no longer the booster. And the, the uh, wing booster is about to reappear next to Kato. Meaning he's now the wing booster. Well, it's going to reappear as soon as he gets off session change. Oh, right. For those of you that know what a session change timer is, uh, setting somebody as a booster or revoking booster from somebody will invoke a session change timer. Meaning if you set somebody as booster, they can't dock, jump, etc., etc., for 10 seconds. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're setting somebody as a booster, please ask him first. And don't just right-click set booster, because you can totally get him killed that way. Ten seconds is enough to die. If you can't dock up suddenly. So yeah, as soon as Kato gets off session change, this should actually go through. Boosts gotta get iffy, get a bit iffy if you, if you're doing well session changing. I'm getting a spinning wheel of death. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting a spinning wheel of death right now. It's, it's, it says member changing, but it's not actually changing you. Alright, let's see. Revoke booster, set booster. That should work, technically, maybe. Yeah, job, probably in a rejoin. That should hopefully work. All right, now Kato's back in fleet. I'm going to wait for session change just time, <laughs> so we can actually show the farmer links. Now, once again, the links aren't on right now, so you want to watch your fitting window for uh, armored warfare links, or armor resistances, rather. Let's see. I'm just going to work this time. It's spinning again. Member changing. The fleet window is a bit iffy when it comes to setting boosts, as you can see from me uh, screaming at the fleet window slightly. It sometimes simply refuses to set the boosts on somebody, and you need to let them drop fleet and rejoin fleet and move them around and all that. And then at some point it's maybe going to work. <laughs> maybe. It's weird. Like that.
All right, let's see. Set wing blister. Oh, that worked. So there we go. There we go. We now have a wing blister. Beautiful. Okay, so once again, take a look at your armor uh, resistances. In my case, they're currently 50, 35, 45, and 10, because I'm going to take. And tech 2 and all that. So I got a tech 2 bonus. Okay, I just see Kato and Darkman behind me. So in a few seconds, you should turn on his links. And at that point, you will see your resistances going up. In my case, they just spiked to 63, 51, 59, and 33. It's the same boost that you got to your shield resistances earlier. It's, I think, 30. Percent. I could be wrong on that one. 34.5% according to my uh, mouse over. So there's that. Actually, no. 25.8. 25.8 is the bonus. I checked the wrong one. So yeah, you're getting 25% shield resistances, which is uh, arm resistances, which is the equivalent of an energized epic in my brain. That you're getting for free on your ship. You're not seeing any of the bonuses. You're not in all dread, are you? Oh wait, yes you are. You're not in... You don't have a squad commander. You're in squad 2. Now you're in squad 1. There you go. You're in squad 1 now. You should be seeing boosts at this point. Check again. The problem was you were in squad 2, meaning you didn't have a valid squad commander, meaning you weren't getting boosts. As a perfect demonstration of how... Um, how squad command positions work. You need a valid squad commander or you don't get anything. You should now be getting the armor resist bonus, and I think the Ebor bonus, if Kato has that one, I'm not sure. He's technically bonus to info warfare links, but I think that's a fleet fit, so he's not gonna have, uh, he's not gonna have, uh, info links, probably. No, just the other ones, yeah, I do. Okay. So you're just getting the armor resist bonus. That's that one. He'd be info bonus, but he's a, he's a PvP boosting ship, probably, so it's not gonna have boosts, uh, like multiple boosts. So the only PvP fit command ship, you typically don't want to use them in slots and command processors, especially since command processors are pretty high on fitting cost, meaning they make it harder for you to actually fit a tank after that. So what you typically do is you just fit the three you're allowed to fit, and then just use your remaining high slots on like a whoring gun or something, and uh, use the mids and lows of buffer tank. Or like capacitor boosters in the mids to make sure you can't get it out, and, and low slots you put tank, like that. You get the idea. Anyway, that's that one. That's armor boost. Uh, yeah, that's that's a pretty standard domination fit, respectively. You only have a single cap booster. It's pretty little for three links. But okay. Uh, yeah, you have smart bombs, two bomb drones, and heavy missile launchers for whoring. Never not bring your whoring, whoring gun. Yeah, my ears look similar. It's over in heck. Uh, it's a pretty standard fleet boosting uh, fit. I think mine has a reactive armor hardener except the damage control, but yeah. Anyway, it's pretty standard. Um, that's a fleet boosting ship, for example. Okay, so that's pretty much the end of the lecture. Uh, if there's any more questions, ask them in chat now. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up, I suppose. Alright, no more questions. Well, I hope that was at least slightly entertaining and or uh, informative. I hope you learned something. A uh, uh, question in chat, will the recording of the slides be on the wiki? The recording will be on the wiki as soon as I bother or get around to editing it, hopefully tomorrow, maybe later, no promises. The slides are already in the class thread, and I'm going to put them on the wiki along with, along with the recording, yes. So yeah, that's pretty much all. Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Feedback goes in the forum thread. And we're done here. Oh, one question. There we go. One question. Go ahead. Yes is not a question. <laughs> Does EVUNI offer a replacement for ships if you have the skills? EVUNI offers replacements on command ships if I'm not mistaken, as long as you're in a boosting role. Uh, however, your character losing the command ship needs to be in the university or in the Ivy League Hall of, Hall of Res Residence, meaning if you're not boosting on your uni main or you don't want your boosting alt to be at war, then, uh, well... You're not getting SRP. Not sure why. 
Oh, borrowing ships. Um, not them that I'm aware of, no. You can ask people if they can offer you your alts, of course, but apart from that, no. Like you can ask people if they can drop their alt in a system and uh, boost for you there. But yeah, getting getting a ship for free or borrowing a ship for free is only up to cruiser halls and only take one. No, we don't borrow you, uh, Legion. Don't even ask. <laughs> so yeah, that's that one. No, you get ship replacement program partially partial for them, but um, only if the character losing it is an IV, actually. So yeah, that's that one. We're done here once again. Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening in.